My simple guide to wedding photography flash course is in the final stages and I wanted to share a section with you all. In this section, we're gonna talk about how to set up on-camera flash, your settings, and the modifiers to use with it. Now, currently the course is on pre-order at a discounted rate, but that will be ending by the end of this month. So if you like this video and you wanna go ahead and jump into the course, make sure to do it now so you can get that discounted price. So before we look at actual scenarios of using the flashes in their real settings, let's talk about just using the flashes themselves. If this is your first time ever using a flash, this is where you want to start as far as how to use it and some of its settings. Now, again, we're not gonna master absolutely everything about our flashes, but we're gonna know enough to be able to get great results. So starting out here, I have my two flashes, and if I were gonna use it in a on-camera flash setup, let's just say I take one of my flashes and I'm gonna use them on my camera. I turn it on. And here's my flash and its settings. You'll see right now I'm in manual, that's what the M is. You can see my power, that's the one over 32. And the zoom is at 16 mil, which is actually gonna be set automatically. This will read the information from your camera. It does that through the hot shoe. It's called a hot shoe because it's actually transferring information from your camera. Now I have other settings on here for syncing and things of that sort. But for the most part, I just wanna focus on the fact that my flash is on and my power. Now, again, this is the V862. It may be a little different on your flash. So make sure to look at your manual to see how to change these settings. But what I'm talking about will be the same on every kind of flash. It just may be a little different on how you get to it. So this little lightning bolt looking thing is how I can change my power. So you see, I clicked it, and then now with my dial, I can change my power. I can tell you personally, I actually don't shoot with my power too high. At most, I'm around 1 over 16 or 1 over 32. Now, the lower your power is, the more flashes you're going to get. So if you're shooting, like continuous shooting, and just ba 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 lots of shots, you're going to want lower power so that your flash can actually recycle fast enough to flash again. If you're doing something high power, like one over four, one over two, it's gonna take a long time for your flash to charge back up again. So what will happen is if you're shooting like, bah, 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 you're really only gonna get like two or three different flashes from that because it can't keep up. Also, you're at risk of overheating your flash which won't kill your flash immediately, but the flash will stop. It'll say, hey bro, I'm too hot. I can't flash anymore. So lower power is better if you want to shoot fast. It's what I use during receptions and it's normally good enough. Like you really don't need extremely high power unless you're trying to keep your ISO extremely low, which I do not recommend. Other than that, when you're using your flash by itself, this is really all I'm doing. Now you do have the different modes, but again, I'm usually just keeping it in manual. You can see here I have a mode button and I can change it between multi and TTL. You'll hear a lot of people talk about TTL because it's basically the auto mode of flash. I personally do not like TTL because it guesses too much. And because of that, your settings will be all over the place. Now, as far as editing your photos, if you want your editing to be nice and easy, what you really want is a consistent look throughout your photos. Now, when it's reception time, the lighting is controlled at that point. So if you're using your flash and your flash settings are basically the same and the settings on your camera are the same, you're going to have the same results through and through your reception and it makes it easier for you to edit. And again, if you need help with editing, don't forget about my Lightroom course, which you can definitely check out. Now on TTL, what's going to happen is per every scene, it's going to try and like guess what it should be. And then sometimes the flash could be super heavy. Sometimes it could be low. And again, like I was saying, if you want to shoot fast, you don't know how much power it's actually using at any time. So personally, I do not like TTL. It's too much guessing. I like to be able to set my stuff. And if you use it in manual, for the most part, you can set it and forget it. So at a reception, I'm basically turning my flash on, switching to manual, and then adjusting my power per what I need. And that's it. That's straightforward on-camera flash for my flashes. That's how you use your flash. It's very straightforward. After dealing with your settings, now you can start dealing with your modifier. So pretty much we looked at how I'm setting up my flash. 
let's take our cameras, go ahead and throw our flash onto it so it goes right into the hot shoe again. That's the part on the top. Flash in there, screw it in, and you'll want to point your flash straight up. Mainly what we're going to be using at our weddings is bounce flash. Again, when the ceiling is a nice light color, you can shoot your flash up and bounce it. And honestly, you don't even need a modifier to be able to do that. You could do that just with the flash open how it is. However, I am going to throw my mag sphere on there. So it goes right on the top. It's magnetic, easy to go on. And one question I get a lot is if my mag sphere yellows, the old ones do, the newer ones don't. If it yellows, honestly, it doesn't hurt because half the time there's tungsten lighting at your weddings anyway, so it kind of blends in with everything. Now, if you want to, you can add a gel under this, which will come in your starter pack, and this will orange up the color of your flash, which will help match the room a little bit. I personally don't do that, and it doesn't cause a problem, but if you want your skin tones to match with the room a little bit easier, that's gonna be the best option. So I have my MagSphere on here. We're pointing straight up. Again, when I flash like this, the flash comes up, hits the mag sphere, goes out in all directions now. So it's gonna go 360 the same way the fear would and fill that space. So up and it'll still bounce back. However, if I have a dark ceiling, now I get a bounce off of this that goes around automatically. Again, this is gonna be better for when you're closer to your subjects. So generally I'm shooting on a 35 or a 24 at my receptions, maybe a 50 sometimes. So I'm fairly close. Even if I'm shooting with my 85 for the speeches, I'm still using his mag sphere like this because with it bouncing and also throwing out in a 360 range, it's usually enough. Now I am gonna have to raise my ISO just a bit, but again, that's not a problem. If you know the range of your camera, having the ISO a little bit higher is not gonna hurt anybody. So again, don't think you have to keep your ISO all the way down at 100 only, and that's the only way you can get a good shot. Raise your ISO some to pick up the ambiance of the room, and then let the power of your flash after that fill up the space. For your camera settings, you want to make sure you're at your sync speed or below. The sync speed of a camera can change, so you'll want to check your manual for what your sync speed is. I know for my cameras, it's 1 over 250. For my GFX 100 is 1 over 125. So again, figure that out with your camera. So sync speed or lower. Generally, I'll set mine to 1 over 200, 1 over 250. And then for raising your ISO, find a sweet spot. Mine is usually 800 to 1000, but again, this will change per your camera. But generally, again, you want to raise it enough to bringing the ambiance of the room, but not too much that now you're just introducing grain. So generally I found it's around that 800 to maybe even 1600 range. And generally I'm gonna be wide open on my lens. You can stop down a little bit to make sure you're getting nice sharp photos, but you wanna let in as much light as possible because at this point of the night, it's really dark. So camera on, flash on, and then again, like we said with our settings just before, I'm usually in manual mode around 1 32nd. And like I was saying, because of the way this flash is with this lithium ion battery and with the power being low, I can get multiple flashes off very quickly. So you can see that's flashing basically every time. I wouldn't be able to do that if I had my flash power very high. So now I'm gonna switch my power. Let's just put it one to one, which is full power and watch this. You see that? I got two flashes out and that was probably 10 shots or so. So again, depending on what your power is, is gonna make a difference on how fast your flash goes. I'm not so concerned about flash power. I just need enough light in the room for the photos to look good. And at a reception with things going fast, like during a cake cut or something, I like to be able to fire off multiple shots and have all of them be lit with the flash rather than shooting at one one or full power and only getting one or two shots every now and then. So this is generally the setup. The settings I talked about earlier, plus having your flash on your camera straight up with the mag sphere. This is an on-camera setup and that's it. Generally, since I'm shooting with two bodies, I'll have two of these and that's me for the reception night. 
on camera flash, two flashes, max fears, that's it. Nothing else. No off camera flash. It's very straightforward. And you can get a great look out of this. Generally, I was only shooting like this for the majority of my career. I only started doing more off camera flash recently. So, this is a great setup if you don't have the income to buy like four and five flashes and, you know, four sets of the mag spheres. This is going to be great for you. On camera flash, give this a try. Let me know how your photos look. It will work out and be great. So, now that we know how to set up our flashes on our camera, this is actually the first step before we start doing off camera flash. So, let's talk about how to set up your cameras to actually sync to each other. I hope this was helpful for you. And if you enjoyed what you saw, definitely make sure to sign up for the course. It also gives you access to the More Magenta Collective, which is a group online where I'll be handling all the questions, feedback, and just talking with each other about wedding photography. It's definitely worth it. And I hope you sign up. I hope this was helpful. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch y'all next time.